today we're going to see what we can do while messing around with a popular orc build. It's time to deploy a dread mob. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So we've done unit reviews for the Death Dreads, Killer Cans and Gorkonauts and Morkonauts now, so I thought we could put some of those ideas into a couple of army lists. There's certainly some decent synergies to be had within the Orc Codex for the Orc Walkers, although I will admit that probably in terms of pure competitive play, I do think that the Orc Walkers are stronger in a bit more of a niche supporting role, such as teleporting in and making use of some excellent custom jobs that we have. I thought it would be fun to try and make an entire Orc Walker list work though, so in this video we'll talk about two potential ideas. The first one is a bit more of a simplistic mono clan list, just aiming to put as many Orc Walker bodies on the table as we possibly can to hopefully overwhelm the enemy with light armour. And the second list is trying to take things and make things a bit more optimised and sacrifice a bit in terms of numbers of bodies to make a more competitive list as a whole. These two are more to demonstrate the broad archetype of the list rather than lists that I've spent hours and hours agonising over, so I'm sure there's optimizations to be made, so if you can see anything obvious then please let me know down in the comments, it'd be good to have your insights with improving an orc list. With all that being said, let's take a look and we'll look at the first one. So this one is a 2000 point list, but for this one I've decided to make entirely evil sons, with the units being arranged into a battalion and a spearhead. Going mono clan does have its advantages, it means that the buffing characters will be able to buff all of the units in the army rather than just a selection of them, which makes things a lot simpler, but it does mean that you lose some optimizations, such as for example running the killer cans in one of the specialist mobs. In this one we're aiming to just get sheer amounts of orc walker bodies on the table, and we've managed to get no less than 28 of them, 3 characters, and 3 units of 10 Gretchen for helping score objectives. The main idea of this list is to try and have it start on the table as opposed to teleporting too many things, though you do have the options for either teleporting in a unit of Death Dreads or the Morkonaut. Our main battle line starting on the table are three enormous units of killer cans with six cans in each, and I've just kept them cheap with big shooters. These clock in at a very cheap 35 points per can, and with five toughness five wounds each, it means they're really quite durable units, and the enemy will spend quite a long time chewing through them. Their job is simply to march up the board, take a lot of damage to the face, lay down a reasonable amount of anti-infantry fire, and where possible get stuck into close combat with those pretty decent can claws. There'd be nothing wrong with upgrading them to rocket launchers if you wanted to move some points around or maybe just drop a can or two, that would certainly be a very valid option. These cans are mainly supported by the Death Killer Wartrike and the Warboss on Warbike, who are both pretty essential units to keeping the cans around. The Warboss will use his Breaking Heads ability to stop the cans running away, as he can just chip off a few mortal wounds to keep them around. Morale is quite a big weakness of big units of killer cans like this, so I think that he's pretty essential to be at the heart of the formation. The Death Killer Wartrike is there to provide advance and charge to all the units, whether that's the killer cans or the Death Dreads. This really increases the threat range of these big scary melee units meaning that the killer cans will be able to on average charge things that are around 16 or 17 inches away, and the death dreads more like 20 inches away when they're in his aura, due to them getting plus one to move, advance and charge by the evil son's detachment special rule. We also have a big mech with a custom force field, who will be able to amp up the defence of at least some of the units in the detachment, though I'm well aware that this won't cover all of them. Depending on the exact enemy, and if they've got loads of AP 3 or 4 weapons, we might even think about popping that stratagem for a really big custom force field turn 1, and with an 18 inch aura that could pretty well cover most of our front line of the army, and protect us from a crucial turn of damage dealing. Alongside and around our can wall, we'll be running our death dreads, and again I've chosen to keep them very cheap here, each one armed with one dread claw and three big shooters. These guys are only 75 points each for 8 wound models, so are pretty decent in terms of durability. They'll be laying down a reasonable amount of DACA fire support as well, and can happily advance and shoot their big shooters with no penalty thanks to the evil son's tactic. They might not be quite as fighty as some of their dread alternatives with more saws or claws, but they'll still have 3 dread claw attacks, and because they're so cheap, hopefully we can be getting more of them into combat. Finally, we've brought a Morkonaut along with a custom force field and taking the sparkly bits for hitting on fours. The Morkonaut damage profile is fairly impressive when it has sparkly bits, and I strongly think about teleporting this guy in, shooting with everything, and then trying to make the charge maybe with ramming speed if we really felt that we absolutely needed to get that charge off. He should cause a bit of carnage and can add a bit of ranged anti-tank to the list, which we otherwise lack. When we're getting up close to the enemy, the Death Killer War Trike and War Boss and War Bike can certainly engage the enemy as well, as both of them are also decent fighty characters, and this list shouldn't have too much trouble munching through hard targets at close range. Finally, to complete the battalion for the list and earn us a few command points, we have those three units of Gretchen. We could use them quite flexibly, either they could be used to screen out incoming deep strike threats and keep the cans extra safe for a turn, 
or we could just deploy them at the back to camp on objectives and deny people deep striking into the backfield, allowing us to send all 28 of our orc walkers straight up towards the enemy. Overall, I do think that this is a fun list, although I don't think it's all that competitive. The main problem being that even with Evil Sons, quite a lot of these units are really quite slow, and it means that your opponent might have a good couple of turns shooting them before they get into melee, which is the only way that they really deal that efficient damage. Big shooters will do a little bit to infantry, but not all that much to anything else. I think the main strengths are that it's fairly durable and pretty strong in close combat. We are bringing an absolute ton of power claw and tough wounds to the table, but I think there's quite a lot of matchups where we're just going to struggle to bring that raw might to bear on the enemy, either because a gunline army can kite them and destroy them for a few turns before moving forward to claim objectives, or there might be some armies that can really easily move block them, either with very cheap chaff infantry, or perhaps even not interact with them properly at all, such as flyer lists. Despite these weaknesses though, I do think it'd be quite fun to play, and might even be a bit of a spoiler matchup for some of the more competitive lists, we just weren't expecting to see all this much light armour on the table, particularly not backed up by multiple 5 plus invul saves to keep them alive further. In terms of list construction, if you were going single clan, there were another couple that I was highly considering. I was quite interested by the idea of running a goth clan war, weirdly enough, mainly for the idea of using Makari, Gaskell's 65 point banner waver, who can give a 6 plus feel no pain type save to our big units of cans, making them far more survivable and really annoying to shift. Behind that and a 5 plus save, the list would be a fair bit slower, but a fair bit more durable. And you could also have the option of throwing in Gaskell instead of a few of the dreads. He fits in quite well with the idea of the list, being a relatively slow moving combat monster. Another option could be Death Skulls, which will just make every unit besides the cans massively more efficient in close combat, as they each get a hit, wound and damage reroll in the shooting and fight phase, so it's far better as an offensive army. So let's move on and talk about the second list then. Here we're running with the same sort of ideas, but we're being a little bit more flexible on the only can sort of idea, and I've actually fleshed it out a bit more with declaring things like custom jobs, warlord traits and relics. These guys are split into two different detachments, a tin edge detachment to make the cans work and extra fighting in close combat, and a death skulls dreadwire detachment to give a lot of juicy rerolls to our dreadnoughts and this time a gorkonaut. Again, we're deploying the full complement of 18 cans with big shooters, supported by the Death Killer War Trike and War Boss on War Bike to provide advance and charge, leadership mitigation, and two very scary melee threats as well. In this one, we've souped up the War Boss on War Bike further by giving him the Killer Claw for rerolling all wounds and a flat 3 damage, and also he's getting the biggest boss for an invul save and extra attacks. This guy has a very reasonable chance of one-shotting most common vehicles. For the killer cans themselves, on one unit we'll be using those orchimatic pistons to give them plus 3 inch to their move, which means that that can mob with their 4 plus weapon skill has an average threat range of around about 20 inches, so the enemy is really not going to be safe from these guys. One mob of these brutal tin head killer cans does around about 15 wounds to your standard toughness 7 vehicle, so despite being cheap and tough, they're really not a threat that your opponent can really afford to ignore. Another unit will be taking the Dirty Gobbins, which is minus one to hit, doubling down on how irritating they are to remove. Moving over to the second detachment, we've decided to make these Death Skulls to capitalise on their excellent rerolls both in the shooting and fight phase. We've also made this the Dread War Specialist Detachment from Visualis for both access to the Soup Top Shocker and the ability to fire with a unit twice for two command points. Our Warlord is the Soup Top Shocker Big Mech, who doesn't really need too much more explaining, he's just ludicrously dangerous and can be made even more so with stratagems, and he'll be taking that big killer boss trait to double down on his ludicrous punch against vehicles. We've also got a big mech with a custom force field to help protect our Gorkonaut and Death Dreads, unfortunately it won't be able to be used on the killer cans. In the heavy support section, we've got three Death Dreads with quad custom mega blasters and sparkly bits, which I already mentioned a bit in the Death Dread video itself. These guys just get to ludicrously decent efficiency with those rerolls and hitting on fours, as the custom mega blasters love their rerolls to hit wound and damage. Just on average, each one of these 80 point critters does around about 5 to 7 wounds on a toughness 7 vehicles which is just hilariously good damage output point for point. We could think about teleporting them, though you do have to bear in mind that our command points are a little bit stretched in this list, just because we've spent a lot of them on the excellent custom jobs already. Finally, on the walker side of things, we have a Gorkonaut, who is armed with Slug Goblin, the upgunned Deathstorm Mega Shooter that gets plus 1 to hit within 12 inch range, and 24 shots at strength 6 AP-1. Again, he's another potential candidate for teleporting, and maybe even using the custom ammo strats to fire that little murder machine twice for 48 shots hitting on 4s. If you really wanted to blow all of the command points on him in one turn, you could also use ramming speed to pretty much guarantee a charge, and in combat he's just ludicrously dangerous against vehicles, with 6 attacks at strength 
strength 16, AP minus 4, and D6 damage, and he's got the death score rerolls there too, to reroll one failed hit, wound, and low damage result. Again, if he does manage to get in, he's going to one-shot most vehicles in the game. Finally, to back them all up and secure the rear of the army, we've got really quite a decent number of Gretchen, a full 60 of them. They can keep our home objectives under wraps. I've got enough of them that we could do that, and also string out 30 of them in front of the drop zone, if you really wanted to push back any deep strike threats a long way away, and hopefully ensure that the cans get the first charge on them, rather than the other way around. Just to add some cheap and effective fire support in, we've also taken six smasher guns. We've already talked about them a few times before, they're just generically strong. And in a list like this, where you're basically all armour anyway, they're going to be pretty low on the priority list. Generally, I think your opponent's going to be more scared by the Cannes, Dreads, and the Gorkonaut, meaning that these guys could easily be putting out their excellent firepower literally all game long. Overall, I feel that this list is far stronger than the first. Still maybe not the optimal build for Orc competitive play, but any one of the elements of the army on its own does really have the potential to punch well above its weight if it gets a decent turn of damage output off. Those custom jobs and relics really allow them to jump up to the next level. In general, I think we'll struggle most against lists that bring a horrendous amount of anti-tank firepower, particularly things like Imperial Fists with Centurions and Heavy Bolters and stuff. An enormous enemy horde could also be a bit of an option, say if we were playing another list of Orcs that brought more of a Green Tide sort of affair. Despite having quite a lot of pretty high quality anti-tank firepower, we don't have all that much anti-infantry, aside from the can big shooters and the Gorgonaut slug gobbin. I think this list will be a blast to play with and against. We've got a lot of random orky elements causing fun carnage in their own unique way, which is very much the way that it should be. So I hope those might have given you a few ideas for building a dread mob list of your own. If there's any particular combos, synergies or formations that you think that should be included in the best dread mob list around, then please let me know down in the comments, or if you can see any optimizations to make these even fightier. Thank you very much for listening to an Orspets Tactics video. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more. We'll have plenty of other Orc stuff coming out over the next few weeks. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd just like to mention my Element Games and Amazon affiliate links down in the description below. Basically, if you're thinking of buying some Warhammer in the near future, whether that's Space Marines, Orc Boys, or 18 Killer Cans, if you click on one of the links below, the Element Games in the UK for a 10% discount, or Amazon in the US, then a small proportion of the money spent goes towards Orspets Tactics without costing you a penny more. So if you were planning on buying some models anyway, it can be a nice way to support the channel while costing you no extra, and the support of the people doing this really does help me justify spending so much time making videos, and helps keep more coming. But in any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.